understand, five seconds ago, there's water here. Common sense tells me that where there's water was, there's mud going to be. Hallelujah. Common sense. But you got to understand we're not operating in common sense when we're in God's realm. This is where it's hard to grasp, okay? And I'm talking about spiritual here. When we step out in faith, following that man of God, he puts his foot out and he steps forward and he said, you know, I'm going to try this water. Hallelujah. And as soon as his foot hit the water, it rolled back upstream a long way. Hallelujah. Way back up by that little town. And while the water is standing, the Bible said it stood in a heap. I've never seen a river stand up before, but I promise you if it stands up, it's going to stand up in a heap. Hallelujah. And so it's standing up in a heap back there. And as that priest took the next step, he didn't go up to his ankles in mud. He was on dry ground. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to understand tonight, amen, that when the man of God steps forward in faith, amen, you can follow him because God is going to perform the miraculous with every single footstep. Hallelujah. Oh, you hear what I'm saying tonight? Oh, brother, just because you're going way out on a limb. Listen, I've been out on limbs before. I've had the, I've had the limb. You know what faith is? I used to, this was my description of faith, Brother, Brother Condi. I used to tell our church in Wales, faith is getting out on the limb and taking the saw and cutting the limb off and watch the tree fall. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right. Yeah. Because God's not going to let you down. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, and so that priest steps out in faith and, and God does the miraculous as soon as he makes the step. Because God has said, it's ordained to me. You follow me. Hallelujah. Oh, and so the priests are following, amen, the, the instructions of God. And as they're following the instructions of God, God is honoring his word. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to understand here tonight that the man of God that God has placed in your life, I, I'm not going to lead you wrong, but you hear me tonight. Oh, yeah. And those priests begin to step out in faith. God performed the miraculous. And you got to understand this wasn't 25 folks crossing the River Jordan. How many was it, Rob? Pretty close. Pretty close to 4 million people. Almost as big as the city of Dallas. Standing in line. And the priest just walked out there and just stood there. Hallelujah. And you gotta understand, either something miraculous is happening to get four million people across the Jordan River in or it's gonna take days and those priests are gonna be were the priests standing there for days? No, I don't believe that. I believe God miraculously moved those people from one side to the other. Hallelujah. Let, let me explain something to you. I, I don't know if you know anything about the tabernacle. We haven't, we haven't taught on it, but we should teach on it here in the next few days. Amen. But the tabernacle in the wilderness, the Bible said that that veil that was between the holiest, the holy place and the holiest of holies was attached uh, with rings uh, on all four sides to poles that went around uh, 
all the way around and it was attached on all four sides there was no opening in that veil there was no no split in it uh, there was no place for that priest to get through but once a year when atonement came the bible said that they, they tied a rope to the priest's ankle and uh, he had the little bells and the pomegranates that were sewn into his uh, garment that when he walked, when he was doing the ministry of the tabernacle, those little bells would ring. And if there was any sin in his life, amen, the bell stopped ringing because he dropped dead. That's what the rope was all about, to drag him back out because nobody else could go in there and get him. But that one time a year, he would go in there consecrated, dedicated, and he would go before the veil. And the Bible said that he would be transported, he would be moved from this side of the veil into the holy place, or the holiest of holies, from the holy place into the holiest of holies. There's no way he could do it. He couldn't walk through that veil. You know how he got there? It was done supernaturally. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody needs to understand the God we're serving tonight is a supernatural God. And his desire is no longer for us to stay on this side of the river. The promises are waiting. Hallelujah. God wants to move us supernaturally into those areas of the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody needs to understand tonight that the reason you've been going through hell is because Satan understands you're going to be used by God. And he's doing everything he can to destroy your faith and your credibility. Oh, let me tell you something. Satan's never been known far and wide. <clears throat> you hear me? Amen. We're going to have people out of this church go around the world as missionaries. Amen. In fact, we're probably going to pay for them to go. You, you say, boy, you're talking big. No, no, no. I, I'm talking God. I know my God. Hallelujah. What does the Bible say? The people that know their God shall do exploits. Hallelujah. Do you really know your God? Do you trust Him? Hallelujah. So, they're following the Spirit of God. So they're being led by, the, oh, you got to understand, all those years in the wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness, you're wandering around, they're being led by the Spirit of God. All that time. When they first got to the promised land, they refused. And God had led them by fire at night and by a, a pillar of cloud in the daytime. He kept them cool in the hot wilderness by keeping a cloud between them and the sun. At nighttime, he was a fire. He provided light for the whole camp of Israel. But yet, through all the miracles and signs and wonders, he had brought them through to get them to where he could use them and bring them to the land that he had promised them. When he got them there, they did not want to believe and accept it. But the second time around, whoo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. There were a couple of spies went in, and they went to the city of Jericho. Of course, the city of Jericho is a big wall city, and, and uh, you know the story. Rahab was there, the harlot, and uh, she took the, the spies, and, and she, now let me tell you, God is so awesome that he works where you don't think he can work. Hallelujah. The folks on the street that we shun is the folks on the street that God uses. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You hear what I'm saying? Amen. This, Rahab was a whore. Let's just call it like it is. She, like, if I was a harlot, she was a whore. Okay? Now y'all understand. And, uh, so, so here the spies are. These are Israeli spies. They come in 
And, 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 and they heard all the stories throughout the city about how afraid those people were of the people of God. Let me tell you something tonight. Amen. That's the same wall city that their ancestors had seen. That's the same wall city that their ancestors had looked at and said, there's no way we can take that. Hallelujah. But here they are, two of them are going into the city. And, and the stories they're hearing are, oh my God, the Israelites are coming in. And, and, and you know those are the people that God parted the, the Dead Sea for. Those are the people that, that God has done all those miracles in the wilderness for. And then they're coming here. You know what? That's what the demons of hell are saying in this city right now. Oh, something's stirring over there at the sanctuary of Adam. I'm not sure. because we're human beings. We think of, of how we would do it. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we need to get a herd of D9s in here. Probably need to pull in a couple of those uh, B1s. <laughs> Let them come over and strafe it real good with a few bombs and then uh, get one of them Abrams in here, kind of blast the walls a few times and then uh, it will march around. That's what we think. That ain't the way God thinks. Now God just does something plain, don't even make sense. Just walk around the city one time a day for six days. And on the seventh day, you walk seven times around it. And on the seventh time, I want you to blow some trumpets. Hallelujah. I, I want there to be a little bit of worship going on on that seventh trip around. Hallelujah. Oh. Something. These Jews are on the outside of the wall walking around the city. Now, God is so cool that the city couldn't collapse outwards. God did an implosion. He was the first master in implosions because the city fell in on itself. Hallelujah. I don't know how come God did it that way. I, I don't. And that's. That's beyond me. But I'm here to tell somebody tonight, you need to understand, amen, that the things that God is going to be doing here is some of it's going to look plumb strange to you. Some nights you're going to think, what in the world has Pastor done? He has done went crazy. He's lost his mind. Don't you know the people on the wall of that city looking around, looking down there, and those Jews walking around one time a day for six days? are thinking, what in the world is wrong with these people? And about, about the seventh trip on the seventh day, hallelujah, there came a shaking. They begin to realize now there's really a whole lot more to this than meets the eye. Oh, 
come on, the enemy of our soul in this city, the enemy that's had a grip here so long is, is understand. He don't know why God is doing things the way he's doing them. He's doing everything he can to stop it. He's trying his best to throw teach in the cog. But I'm here to tell somebody tonight that God is in control. God was never out of control. You don't want to see God out of control. The day God gets out of control, that sun will come streaking across the sky. And it will hit the earth and bounce off and hit Mars. And the asteroid belt, amen, will stretch out, split up and go different directions. You don't want to see God out of control. But you want to see God. Amen. In his infinite wisdom. As he begins to give revival to a city. Hallelujah. That's been hungering and thirsting. Oh, come on. The Bible said he that hungereth and thirsteth after righteousness shall be filled. If you could hear the cry of this city, this pastor's hearing tonight. If you could hear the cry of this city, there are people that are crying on their bed right now as I'm talking. That are crying in their apartment building going, God, if you really are here, let there be a church that I can find the peace that I need in. Hallelujah. Oh, God, if you're really real, let me know that there's somebody in this city that loves me. And tomorrow you're standing in line at the grocery store and God speaks to you and says, speak to that lady beside you. And you just speak to her, never thinking anything at all about it. And the next thing you know, she begins to weep and begins to say, you're the one I was praying for this time. Ooh, I'm telling somebody here tonight, amen, that, that God is having his way in this place. Amen. You've never been this way before. Hallelujah. There was one other thing that he told them. He said, before you enter this land, I want you to do, and that is to consecrate yourselves. You know why? Because this work is too great for you. I can't do it on my own. I, I have not got the ability in myself physically nor mentally to do it. But if I consecrate and dedicate myself to the work of God. Oh, come on. I said somebody needs to consecrate and dedicate yourself to the work of God. Hallelujah. Amen. God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Hallelujah. I'll make myself available no matter what it is that you ask me to do, Lord. Amen. You hear what I'm saying tonight, church? I'm telling somebody here that God is going to speak to you directly. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Just the other night, just to show you what I'm talking about, just, just this week. Amen. I, I have been trying to reach an individual. I've called and I've called and I've called. I've tried to reach him for this last revival. I couldn't, couldn't reach him. Uh, I, I called. I had. The, I thought I had the right number. I don't know if it did or not. But the number I had, I never. I would leave messages and nobody would ever answer me. Nobody would call me back. And so uh, I was at the house and I just got in from work late. Brother Condi and my wife were working, cleaning out my garage and bless their hearts. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm. I got there and I began to. Kind of helped my wife a little bit, and I, I got really, really thirsty. And now we had all that dust in there, and I was just choking. I was having trouble breathing because I was still weak in my lungs from that bout with the flu last week. And so the wife had said, I, I, I think I'm going to run to, to McDonald's and get some tea for us. And she said, that's good. That's, that would be great. So I went by a little, little store, and I picked up some water for for. Candace and Uncle Josh here and moved on down to McDonald's and when I walked in to McDonald's before I got to the counter, somebody goes, Pastor Driscoll. 
and I turned around and it was the individual I've been trying to reach. Hallelujah. So I went over and I sat down with them and for over an hour we visited. And 